Yeah. How much of a challenge is it to when you come in and, and look around and the depth is not where you want it, and now, what, two years later, three years later, you're looking around the field and you're wondering who's going to play, where can I put this guy, and how, how can I get all these guys on the field? Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, definitely. It's got to be, I mean, it's a, um, you know, there's there's always been talent in that room, but now we've got, we've assembled a, uh, a group of guys that um, as deep and as talented as I've ever been around, um, good kids, uh, good good individuals, good citizens, good students. Um, but on the same hand, it, you're right. It's 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 a different it's a different day and time in terms of uh, you know getting on the field. It's true competition. Well, you know, we, we've said this before about you know it's it's my responsibility to develop that room into the best linebacker room in the country and. Um, with that being said, you know, guys getting reps, uh, just being smart about reps throughout their careers here. Um, and it's a credit to, to Coach Grinch and the system here that uh, it allows you to develop these guys as linebackers from, you know, from day one into, you know, now it's a third year in the program. It's a third year in the defense. So um, we should be seeing some jumps in, in production. You should be seeing some jumps in efficient play, especially from, you know, the second level of defense. Mm-hmm. Danny didn't come in during the midterm. Yeah, um, you know, was very very excited about Danny uh, from from the get. You know, and just being able to, you know, identify certain traits, some physical traits early on in the recruiting process that we knew that was accurate. You know, you find some some stuff that that you know that's accurate, accurate. So whether it be you know verified track time or uh, we know exactly how tall he is, and then you put that with the tape uh, from his high school career. Um, he, he flashed on film, um, but the kicker was really just being able to talk to him and his family and his upbringing and, and the mentality that in, in which they bring uh, to their kids. They come from an athletic family. Um, you know, dad is, is from this part of the country. Uh, Mom, is she went, she went to college in this part of the country. Um, and they live down in Orlando. But there's a lot of the, the same values that you, you see from, you know, people that are in this this part of the country so you got those things that you see on film and then you get to know him as a person and and you get really excited about him but you know you kind of you kind of hold off on all the expectations till he gets here and then you see him and it's like oh man good looking dude you know he's big and um, he's he's he's, uh he's got some muscle on him um the thing you start seeing right now is his his uh willingness and um he plays fearless, man. He's a, he's a willing guy. He'll, he'll run around. He runs fast. He, he pursues to the ball. He's got closing speed. Um, he's done a great job of absorbing the defense and being able to play Mike and Will, which, you know, that provides him an opportunity to get on the field. Um, so, uh, to, to say the least, I'm extremely excited about Danny. I mean, I'm, to say the least, I'm extremely excited about his future here at the University of Oklahoma. That he wasn't a little bit more highly recruited. I don't even know what I recruited. I don't even know what else. That is what it is. I, you know what I'm saying? A highly recruited deal, perfect, awesome. If you are, great. If not, you don't fit in our system or not. And and I don't care what anybody else thinks. I'm going to evaluate the guy, and if he's going to help us, it's just you know I'm I'm all in on it. But I understand what you're saying. I just I, that didn't matter to me. You got the. Uh, a number of linebackers you think can play, but in today's age of guys, if I'm not playing, I'm look, looking to leave. Mm-hmm. Does that concern you at all? How you how you divide up reps? Yeah, you got to adjust. Well, you know, you got to. Adju- Here's the thing: at the end of the day, my responsibility is to put the best two guys out there. It's going to help us win a game. Period. And uh, hopefully, I've carried myself through uh, you know two and a half in, into three years now uh, here that you know. They've gained trust, they've gained respect, they've gained confidence in the things and I do and how I coach. And, you know, I want guys who want to be here. And if they want to leave, you know what? It could be the worst decision of your life because we got such a good thing going here. And that's the, the, the environment that I want to create in that, in that room that you're a part of something. This is something that's big. We're, we're, we're doing a lot of really good stuff there. So, yeah, I, I understand that there's individual wants and needs, and I get that. But if you're a part of this group, if it, we're different and we carry ourselves different, we walk different, 
And, and to me, that's going to help these guys throughout their life. So uh, there's concerns. Absolutely, there's concerns. You don't want to lose anybody. Um, but hopefully we've done enough work on the front end um, to make sure that this is such a great deal to be a part of that they, they're dying to be a part of it. They can't, they can't live without it. How much different is the, the feeling inside your room, uh, the, the players from you, comfort level, recruiting when you, when you talk to guys well, about where this defense is now, where this group is now versus where you were when you got here? Talking about recruiting, you know, when you when you first show up, um, it's kind of a you know it's kind of a pipe dream. This is what can happen, you know, and then the what what you know having those guys drafted. Over the last few years, and, and obviously in particular Kenneth Murray being a first-round guy, you know what that does is add a little bit of validity of what you're talking about. So you can kind of stand up a little bit taller and, and talk directly in their eyes about, you know, this is what we're doing here, and you're either going to be with us or you're not. And you know, but being in the third year of the defense, as far as like with the with the backers in in particular, it's a different level of confidence. You know, it's the it's no, you know, it's no longer, it's no longer a teaching session in, in, in the meetings. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, we're sitting there talking about how to get better as a linebacker, how to play uh, certain blocks a certain way, how to do this a little bit better, a little bit more efficient. How we, can we use our hands a little bit better? How we can, how we better in, in, in coverage and in our under coverage. Um, you know, early on, it's okay. Here you got the A gap. You know, here you know, understand in this formation in this call you have the B gap. Um, so we're past that now, you know, and, and all that stuff as like, like we've talked about before about doing the work on the front end of this, okay. Third year in the program, let's go. We should know this, you know, so, um, it's a good feeling, but again, that allows guys to, to, to walk around and, and be able to look people in the eye, shake people's hand with a firm handshake and, and, and know that you belong to be here. Brian, Shane Witter was a guy that you guys were seemingly really high on in spring practice. What continued steps have you seen him take this fall? You know, the thing with Shane is you, what you see is you don't see nearly as many mental errors um, that you maybe saw in the past uh, within practices and, 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 and the limited game reps that he's had. Uh, he, and whenever there's less thinking with Shane, um, he obviously plays fast because he's a fast dude. Um, but that doesn't take away his ability to be a, a great tackler. He's got heavy hands. Um, I'm excited about him. Uh, Coach, you have some older players, I think Caleb Kelly, Brian mm -hmm. Mead, and you got some younger players too. What's it like, as you, from your perspective, just seeing that dynamic and how those guys are able to mentor the younger guys? Oh, they're all good people. You know, they're all good people. And at the end of the day, you know, everybody in that room, our main objective is to win, play well, and win. Can we improve? So, you know, they, they, uh, they have a good relationship with each other. I, you know, everything that I've witnessed has been, been really, really good. Being really excited about it. Um, you know, those old guys have been through a lot in their time here, you know, and then even maybe some of those guys that you are thinking of that are young guys, they've been in a fire too. You know, so we've got, and that's part of having a veteran room. You know, these guys, they've all kind of experienced it. So there's a there's a common ground with a lot of those guys in there, and and uh, it's been really good. Real quick, and ask you another question. You were part of the program when you were fall camp in 2000 national championship. Mm -hmm. I know it's two decades away, or but is, do you see that same dynamic, that same chemistry, that same bonding? I know you can never predict the future, but are you feeling that at all? Here's the deal. I know this on the defense side of the ball from the time that we got here in 2019 till today. We're a lot better defense than we were back then. Furthermore than that, I, I can't hitch. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I was a bright-eyed freshman in the year we won the national championship. I was uh, trying to figure out how I could take a nap in the middle of the day. <laughs> hey, Brian. Uh, Lincoln's talked a little bit about how the transfer portal has changed, uh, obviously, so many things. But one of the things, looking ahead to high school recruiting, mm. likely to be less guys that you'll take in high school classes. and. I mean, we all know there's that guy that is the last scholarship guy mm -hmm. that has become great. And that, those, those aren't maybe as likely to happen. How does that change the dynamic for you? I know your guys are largely high school guys you recruited. Yeah. But are you starting to see that change you know, a little bit? It's, um, I think each individual 
position, team, side of the ball. I think it's all kind of on an individual basis on the need. You know, do you do you feel like that that your young guys are ready to? And and it's our again, it's our responsibility to develop the young guys into to being able to 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 go take those reps. Um, it's it's kind of a you know it's uncharted territory, but we've got to be ahead of the game on it. Um, and again, our objective is to go win games. So what's going to put us in the best position to go win? If you know, if I've got a choice between the two, I'd obviously like to high, uh, uh, sign high school kids uh, and develop them, just because you know that's what you're familiar with, and and I take a lot of value in the development of of our guys. So um, with that being said, you know, we got to put ourselves in a position to win. And if that if that means that we got to go find another player that that it's things didn't work out somewhere else, then so be it. You know, Brian, we talk so much about the new guys, but you know, Asamoa, Olebu, mm-hmm. White, they've all played a lot of football. Yes, they have. Talk about their progress because they, they look really they look like they've improved physically looking at them today. Yeah, and they should. You know, we we put a, a huge stock on, on their physical development throughout the off season. Um they should look different. They should play different. They should play faster. Um, and if they're not, we didn't get the right guys in there. So they've got, and like I said, those three guys are some of the guys that's been in the fire. Like that, those guys have been in it. So we've got higher expectations for them, and they need to they need to go produce, which I've got every every bit of confidence that they will. Um, but you know, their growth as uh, those three in particular, their growth and their their maturity level, um, their confidence. Um, the way they carry themselves, it's, it's been really good. It, it's exciting to watch. It's exciting to watch those guys grow up, for sure.